Welcome to The Advocate, a program that thrashes out all the topical issues of the day. When you are in government, you don't see nothing wrong mm, with exactly. whatever is happening. The moment you are out there, everything is that wrong. Is, we can't even see yes. many women now, and when they're there, they're not even really making a mark, and then they have an NYSC problem and this and that. One of the reasons why we don't have more women in politics in Nigeria is for as long as political meetings continue to take place in the middle of the night. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. No, really. It's disastrous for a president to, even to be unaware. unaware of the chief It's justice. a ploy. It could be a strategy. That strategy was it's a very, very, very <laughs> terrible <laughs> strategy. <laughs> because the box stops at your table. Whether it's that we don't look after our cities and quite frankly Nigeria has become in a very ugly place. Mm. When you are the only one feeding the people with this news and there is nobody countering them, it becomes, you know, the, the news. If charity doesn't begin at home, then it's hard to see where we make progress. I'm going to be talking about xenophobia or Afrophobia. Either way, charity begins at home. Until re recently, the word xenophobia was little used in public discourse. So it's a testament to the efficacy of the social media grapevine that now the question would rather be who hasn't heard of xenophobia rather than the other way around. The aspect of the recent development that has me stuck in reflection and somberness is not the violence or even naked hatred of one human being for his fellow human being, as traumatic as that is to behold, but the fact that, as one South African lady termed it, it could be more accurately described as Afrophobia rather than xenophobia. So, xenophobia is described simply as a dislike or prejudice towards people from other countries. In the case of the recent developments in South Africa, what we've been observing is largely an aggressive and even violent rejection of African immigrants by black South Africans, hence the term Afrophobia by my South African friend, to which many an African, and particularly Nigerian, respond with a befuddled expression and ask, but why would an African reject and kick out against a fellow African and brother in arms? The explanations only serve to deepen our befuddledness, if there's such a term. Apparently, the average working class South African feels that they have little in common with their fellow African, nor do they want to. They see themselves as a superior breed. However, we should not be surprised. Xenophobia or the history of prejudice against the people with the view that one's nation is superior is as old as history itself. One write-up that charts xenophobia in the United States of America identifies that at one point or the other, this prejudice has been expressed or experienced against the African American, the English and Scottish Americans, the Chinese Americans, and so on. Like wheels in motion, the history of the human race seems destined to gravitate around ignorant and arrogant assertions of superiority and inferiority. The ugliness of it all is driven home when we're on the receiving end. But if we're honest, we have been in a position to practice it towards others and many may even have succumbed to the temptation. Where Afrophobia is concerned, it becomes that much more complex because it would seem that in hating our fellow African, we're indeed projecting a hatred of ourselves. We're buying into the narrative that the African is the loser race and this plays out in an inferiority complex. Our xenophile or love for all things foreign over our indigenous culture and identity. <laughs> what a tragedy. I say it's imperative that we learn to love and project a positive self-love for the African race. We must become Afrophiles. In the face of so much perverse hatred, more than ever, now is the time for charity to begin at home. What do you see, my Very fellow? much needed <laughs> um, advocacy, absolutely. I mean, I, I really do think when uh, blacks are hating other blacks, it is like, it, it's an indictment on us. It makes us look really, really, really bad because like we're hating ourselves. And I never really, um, never really thought of it the way you put it, but now that you've, you've put it out there, it's like, wow, it's even worse than <laughs> and, that it appears. Now, the problem with um, this South African thing or this xenophobia thing is that it only ever really happens among 
um, the lower classes, the, the, the well-to-do and all don't have time for that. They're just sitting there watching us, you know, rip ourselves. Well, I don't know, maybe I'm adding myself to the lower class right now. But, mm -hmm. you know, watching ourselves, you know, rip ourselves apart and what have you, which, which is, you know, it, it is like a game that they're playing using us as pawns. Now, if we learn to understand that and understand that this is a distraction that's been allowed by the South African government to de detract us from the state of their economy, you know, the lack of them providing resources and infrastructure and the things. I mean, South Africa has deteriorated. I've been going to South Africa regularly, like, I think, for the past, would I say, five years or something. And the difference, you know, from the time I went the first time to now is, is just a mess. You know, so I, I think it's, it's good that we need to start to see ourselves as one. And one thing I know South African, black South Africans do not see themselves as the Africa. same as, yeah, they, they don't see themselves oh, as yeah. Africans. So, so you, you get that sentiment when um, I was there many years ago, you know, with my colleagues and uh, they would say, oh, uh, within the office, oh, we're going to Africa. Mm. <laughs> this is, this is a black Africa. South African colleague of mine mm -hmm. in the building. And he says, so is, is, yo, you're going to um, um, Cameroon Nigeria. or you're going to Ghana. Yeah, and he Nigeria. says he's yeah, going yeah. to Africa. Yeah. yeah, I mean, so, yeah. and that narrative is pervasive. Mm. Because I think that, again, I'm not um, going to blame entirely the on whole thing on appetite. But it created a mindset. It created this wave where, you know, um, um, they felt that they were not part of Africa. Because the, Afri the Africans, the people who were ruling the apartheid people then, you know, created this thing that they were separate. And maybe because of the level of infrastructure achievement that they got at that, at that time, they felt that they were not like Africa. You know, I believe the power of the media, of movies, of mm -hmm. communication. We haven't, for example, we've had Nigeria spend 60 something billion during the anti apartheid movement. It we've not had any story, yeah. mm -hmm. any documentary, even so any movie. Aware of it, yeah. it. That the, 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 the normal South Africans would say, oh, oh really? It's nothing. Part of our story. They're part of our story. Mm -hmm. they, they don't know. They're not, they're, and the politicians, are, the politicians strive in ignorance. Mm -hmm. So if people are ignorant, it's better, exactly. for, them, better them, for them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think when I was young, I, 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 I thought about the name South Africa. And I, I, I often wondered who allowed them to name that place South Africa. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you why. And that comes to what you just said. America and South America, I think, is a clear sign that the whites want to take over, want to behave like they are the only Americans. So today mm. we say things like Americans. I hate that word when you're using it for people from the United States because they're just trying to take over a name and then they're South Americans. Okay. So <laughs> in our own case, like we had Africa and then we had South Africa, which was mm. a different continent from Africa. That's what it was in their minds, yeah. the, the, yeah. the, the white people. Now, they've, they, they were able to develop a country for themselves and have pockets of very good cities that mm. they could live in. The vast majority was just basically ghetto. And then you suddenly free the blacks. And they suddenly realize, oh, we own a country that has such a beautiful place as Cape Town, such a beautiful place as Pretoria. Mm. And they don't realize that, well, that's all you've got, actually. <laughs> Almost the rest of the country is, is, is just like Africa, actually. Yeah. And so they thought they were better than us. It, it, you know, it's, it's amazing that um, this thing, mm. if you've been following the trend, seems to happen every two years. Yes, it does. Yes. You know, and uh, I think there's so many things. There are undertones because um, the elections are fast approaching and they need to send a message. And they know that, you know, the guys there want foreigners out. And that's why you notice that there's that, that trend is gradually building because the government is using this to hide all the yeah, inefficiencies, inefficiencies yeah. that we're talking about. You know, um, it's it's very unfortunate. Mm. But um, well, as part of what I was going to share is that yes, that problem is there, and this is as a result of so many years of appetite and you know warping their mindset. Mm -hmm. You know, but there's also that problem of do they really have genuine concerns? You know, we really have to talk about Absolutely. that as well. Yeah, I, you know, I, I still want the, to. The, the concerns are real. Are the foreigners really? Are they? The numbers of foreigners coming in, are they really doing the things they 
They're, they're saying they're, they're, saying yeah. they're doing. Yeah. Are they adding value to their society? Are they changing their way of life? But statistically, of statistically, I less than there's, there's a statistics in terms of crime uh, mm. perpetrated by by non South Africans. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's less than two percent. I see. Mm. All right. So 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 the, the, the average muggings, hijacks, mm. and, yeah, and right. breakings, and all kinds of things are done by the locals. By the exactly. It's two percent. Yeah. yeah. And the then there's this thing, uh, notion that they seem yeah. to claim that Nigerians brought drugs. That's not true. To South Africa, and we're the ones that are sustaining this drug no. opium. No. Like the, the wife of the it's former, let's say the rubbish. NIA boss the equivalent, mm -hmm. the wife of the former, um, I think it was named Sally. His wife was was convicted in Brazil for for, for drug dealing. Yeah, well, I, just wow. before we round up, I just wanted to still maintain that it, if as long as we're thinking they have a problem, we don't recognize that even Africans as a whole have a, have this problem mm. with self loathing. I agree. Yeah, we agree. Because, you know the external factors and society and the trends have made us feel like to Where, be African yeah. is something low, low and to right. be not African. And so you know it, it fits the narrative that when you find yourself in a situation, you want to distance yourself. From fellow from Africans, fellow Africans. Yeah, and, and we need to be conscious of that even where we are. Oh, absolutely, it will play out tomorrow. You know, we'll yeah. be driving some other people away, or something may happen. And just to be conscious of that narrative, and not to be played with like that. Speaking truths to one another is one way of showing love. It's time you showed us some love. Then, time we heard some truths from your feedback. On last week's complete edition, Melissa Bodet says, "Thank you, guys. It's like you're talking about my situation." I live in Texas, and I'm doing business with a Nigerian pastor, so-called. When I ask questions to, that relate to accountability, he has a way of making me feel that I'm rude because we're Nigerian. I am even scared to ask questions when I feel something is not right and working. Now I know better, and I'll act accordingly. OK, I'm glad you've been instructed. There are quite a few comments on Emeka's advocacy on the anchor to underdevelopment being rooted in tradition and culture. Omajali Monday says, wow, this is the biggest message I have had this year. <laughs> Charles Banwo says, I sincerely appreciate the advocate. Thank you guys for enlightening me with these conversations. Paula Lessard says, even the lady and the other guy close to the lady, that's myself and Seidu, are still afraid of their pastors. <laughs> Seidu, you're afraid of your pastor? <laughs> um, both of them are so scared to talk about the wrongs of the church and religion. I pity Nigeria and Africa. <laughs> Keep your comments coming in on our social media platforms on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG or on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, go to www.plustvafrica.com slash The Advocate. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. Right. After the break, Chuka mourns what could be termed a late departure. <laughs> Stay tuned. <laughs> 